All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Anyways, I know you are watching from different locations, so, but where I am, it is, we are already in the afternoon and uh, I'm making this broadcast from Germany. And the essence of this broadcast is for you to understand Power BI, you know, become a pro in Power BI, understand. And this whole lecture is going to take maybe a space of one hour plus or one hour. And you are going to learn, you're going to become, you're going to understand the, the concepts, you're going to understand uh, the flow of your work, and and you're going to make some kind of astonishing vi uh, visuals. So like we said, um, the first thing I want you to understand is that the first time I heard about Power BI, I was like, what kind of power is that, you know? And it is actually a business intelligent tool, and it is very, very good for for data analytics, very, very good. You have also the analytic tools like uh, Tableau and also very, very good. And they they are used to look into your data to make some kind of interpolations and also build some um, astonishing dashboard. It is quite interesting. So I'm going to take you through this journey and then um, we're going to work with, without much ado. Um, the prerequisite for this course is this, that you have to have your Power BI desktop installed on your system. And uh, once it is installed, so we're going to walk around the entire interface of Power BI. We're going to look at the functions, the functionality that it has, and the, what are the possible things that we can do with Power BI. So, and Power BI is a Microsoft tools, and you all know that. And so, and also if you want to become a data analyst, you, you just have to understand this tool. It is very powerful. I love it so much, and I use it a lot. And for my job, I use it also. Um, for trainings like this and uh, and it has been very very efficient okay so the ball rolling so the first thing that you have to do in this power bi class is for you to launch your power bi desktop so once you launch your power bi desktop um this is you're going to see this it's going to display all right so and um once it displays the first thing i always tell my students is this uh is for you to just you can just close this you know, the yellow, just this yellow part of it, you know, these, um, what is displayed now, just close it, okay? So once you do that, I'm going to close it. But now you will ask my yourself, why is that, you know, have to see something like that? Yeah, it, it is very important also if you, if you want to just take a look, you know, through what you have here. For example, you have the, if you want to build reports, you want to watch some videos, you want to see query view concept and you want to upload your reports and create a full report. So all these things are there for you to just watch. Okay, in case you want to do that. You also have a forum and you can see what is new, if there's any updates on Power BI. And you can also find some tutorials that are very necessary for you, you know, if you want something to watch. So once you do that, so the first thing is that I just have to close this, all right? So after closing this, so, um, you can see the environment, the Power BI environment, and I'm going to take you on an approach that is, that maybe you will find it comfortable. You know, you just, at the end, you just find it very comfortable. So, um, the first thing I want you to see is this, let me push this, my, sometimes it blocks my screen. All right. Okay. It's for you to see, um, I always like to take the, the, the left, the bottom, and you know the the right, and then before I go to the top, you know approach. The reason why I did that is just that I I want you to have the kind of flow, all right? Because when you open the Power BI, you see that the report environment is what is being displayed. That means you call you can call it what you call the report canvas, okay? So this is the report environment, okay? It is being displayed, so. And looking at the left hand side, you know, like I told you, I want to take, I want to take the left bottom, right and top approach. So, because when I just launch it, you know, after closing that, you know, after closing uh, what appeared, what was displayed at the beginning. So this is what I find. Okay. So now I have to understand what is going on here first. So this is, if you put your cursor here, you will see that this is our report. You see reports. So that means that is where you, you, you're going to start creating your report. Okay. And this is what is being displayed when you click on the report. All right. So you save the re entire report canvas. So, and the next one is if you click on this, you'll see your data. 
look at it. And now there's nothing that there's nothing to display because we have not we are not we have not chosen the data that we're going to work with. We don't really we we don't know yet. Okay, uh, but I'll introduce you to that. Then, and here you can see if you if you if you click on it or before you click on it, you can see it talks about the model. Now, when you talk about the model, you see it is it's quite a very interesting here that you can see a kind of. Um, um, what you are to expect. You can see that it has to do with when you're trying to join tables together. You can see that this is like, it, this is a table, there's a table and there's a table. So when you, this is what we call um, data modeling also. So you're trying to join two or more tables together and you're trying to join them based on um, columns that are similar, okay? In, in, in the respective tables. So, so that is that. So you see, the model. So the three things that you see on the left hand side first is your report and the data and the model. So if you go downwards, all right. So because like I told you, I'm going to take the left and the bottom and the right approach. So if you go downwards, you're going to see your pages first. And if you look at the pages, you have page one. All right. So this is page one. And one thing I always do, or what I tell my clients or my students is that, um, Anything that you are putting on this, your report page. All right, let it depict what you're doing. For example, are you talking about sales reports? Is it going to be about sales report? Or is it going to be, you're just going to put maybe one visual and you just want to talk about, um, you're, you're dealing with just only the customer information. Always try to name it according to what you're doing so that if you're coming back, it is quite easier for you. Okay, so if you right click on this page, you see that you can rename and you can duplicate. So the advantage of duplicating sometimes your pages is this, for example, you just want, maybe you have created a page and you want to just like, okay, you want to also bring the same font size, you know, to the next page. You don't want to waste time. And only the only aspect you just want to change is that you just want to change just, just a few visuals, you know, and you can just duplicate the page. It's also fine. But you can also rename your page to what you want. Okay, but we'll come to that later. Then the next one is that if you look at page, um, the, the plus sign here, it talks about a new page. So you can click on it and uh, it will give you page two. So if you want more pages and page three, page four, you can just continue to click page three and page four. All right, you can just click and then you get more pages. So, and also if you want to delete, you can just click on this star button there, a star button and it will go. And if you say delete, you say if you, you, say if you save report later, Barbie, I will permanently delete it. Do you want to? I just want to delete it. I've not done anything yet. So the same thing, I want to also delete this. And I also want to click delete. And the other one, I also want to click delete. But you can also leave it if you have opened it and you can, we can still rename them later once we are working on our Power BI. Okay, I guess that one is quite simple enough now. So the next thing, let me move my, my, my face. You know, I don't, you know, sometimes it tries to cover some of uh, what I'm going to do. So. Now that you have understood the left and the bottom, now let's look at the right. Now on the right part of it, you're going to see what you call, you're going to see um, your visuals, all right? You're going to see filter here also. Look at it. I think the first one you see here is your filter, your visuals, and your field. Look at it. Your visualizations, your field, and your filter. So. In the by default, you see the, the what you see here is that is your visualization, because and under the visualization you see your built visuals. That means these are the different visuals that you can put here in your canvas. Okay, and in case you want to make some visualization, you just you just you can just um, um, click on them and then it will it will appear here. So you have the different visuals that are available for you here, and you can see that you have. This is what you call this text um, bar chart. You have what you call um, the state um, column chart, and you have the cluster bar chart, and you have the line chart. You have also the area chart, and you have the pie chart. You have the the donut chart, and you have the map, and you you've got um, different kind of. You have the gauge, and you have you have the multi row chart, and you have um, yeah, you have the metrics and you have the table and you also have the slices. 
Then you also have what you call the decomposition tree. I like using the decomposition tree sometimes, you know. Um, you also have the Q&A and you have this man narrative. And so you can just take a look into all the, all the visuals that you have here. They are very important. It depends on what you want to do and it depends on what suits actually what you, you, you want to do. All right. So, and if you look at it, you have also three dots here. I said to get more visuals. So if you click on this, it will take you get more visuals, import of visuals from a file, remove a visual and restore the fourth visuals. So you can also restore the default visuals. These are the, what you call the, 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 the default visuals. Okay. But you can also get more if you want to get more. So, um, there are some that are free. There are some that you have to pay for, but I think what we have here for now is enough for this class. Okay. So, and downwards, you will see, you have the values, you have add data feed here, drill through cross report, then keep all filter and so sometimes you see here it's on, but this one is off, you know? So uh, it depends on what you want to do, but we'll come to that since this is just the beginning of, of the class. So then if you look at the field now, it is being collapsed here. So let me expand it a bit. So there is nothing here. The reason is that because we have not brought in our data that we actually want to use for this exercise. All right. So um, there is nothing on the field and this is also something that is very, very important. So, but what you can see is this, you haven't loaded any data yet. You see, it tells you you haven't loaded any data yet. So you can get your data. All right. So this is um, actually um, what is important on this part so far. So let's um, take a look now into, into the other part. Let me move this a bit downward. And then let me shift my, my picture to the other side. Okay. All right, fine. So, so um, now that we have looked into this, so now the next thing is this, because I just try to take you through this, the, the left, the bottom and the right side, you know, so that you just have a kind of feelings. But now, um, if you look at the files, now let's look at the menu now. Let's go to the top. You look at the menu. Um, if you click on it, on the file, you're gonna see open report, new, and um, you can save your work. You can get data, you can import, and you can also export. So after you have done your work, you know, um, sometimes, especially if you want to use, if you want to do kind of presentation using PowerPoint or PDF format, you can also export your work, you know, and you see that you can export your work as um, export to PDF, you know, so it's, it's possible and that is fine. So you can also do some kind of settings if you want to. And if you look at the settings here, you can go to the options and settings. You can go to all the options and you will see some things that are um, necessary in case you want to change them. It's coming up, you know, so you can see some of the settings on data load, power query editor, direct query, arrow scripting, Python scripting. And there are a lot here that you can set if you want to do that. Okay. So anyways, um, I will just, I can also, I'll make a, a little um, um, video on that so that you know, in case you want to set something and you know what to do and what to change and what not to change. Okay. So, and so now I can close it again. So in the home, um, you will see that in the home, you have what you call the get data. So you, let's just take a, you know, one step after the other before we look at the insert and the modeling and the views and help. So in the home, you can, um, if you look at the get data, you're going to see that you have different sources of, you know, getting your data. You can get your data from different sources. Okay. You can get your data from your Excel workbook. You can get it from the Power BI data set. Um, when you install this Power BI, there is a data set that is, that you can use, you know, for practice and which is also very important. So we're going to use that data set today for our practice. And then in the next one, we're going to import data from SQL so that you know how both of them work. So you see, yeah, Power BI data flow. And so we are also going to import our data from SQL server so that you have a feelings of how to import data from SQL server. So you can also import a, a text CSV file. You can also import from the web. And so there are very, there are much more, you know, um, ways to import your data. So if you look at more, if you click on more, 
Um, I've clicked them all, so it's coming up. All right. All right. So if you look at more, you see that you, you have the possibility of getting from now, in this case, you know, um, you can do a specific selection so that way you can see all. So you see that you can just apart from Excel and assets and uh, you have different databases. You know, you also have the IBM DB2 database, you have the Oracle and you've got a lot. So uh, you can also import from Azure SQL database from Snowflakes and, and um, many more. So you can see almost about, there are really many. So, so this is, uh, there are many ways. Oh, you can also get from Azure Databricks and, uh, and that's fine. So you, you see a lot to learn here. Okay, so, but please, um, you can also watch our videos on, on Python and also on Azure and so that you understand some of the concepts of um, 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 cloud um, and technology. All right, so, so now um, looking into that, so we can get database. So now how are we gonna get our database? That's a question. So in this case, we can, we're gonna use the one that's, um, that came along with Power BI. So you see here too, you can get from uh, Excel, okay? From Data Hub, SQL Server, because these are actually common ones that people normally use. Then you can enter data and you can also, um, maybe you have worked with some data um, and set already, and you want to use your recent um, connections or recent um, database or data set, you can just check on the recent sources, okay? Then these, you can transform your data. We'll come to that later. And these are the new visuals. So your text box and your visual, your more, for more visuals. So you can also get more visuals from the app store. So, and also you can, if you have some visuals on your files, you can also bring that in. So then when you talk about the insert, um, you can see that in, on, under the insert, you have the new visuals also. You can also insert a new page, but I don't just feel like going to insert here in a new page when I already have the pot possibility to just insert a new page here. So you can see the new visuals, more visuals, and then you can you have here the key influences and the composition tree. All these are also the visuals that we have here because you can see that here you have key influences and also here you also have the key influences. So um yeah yeah there yeah, already then the smart narrative and you have uh, um, um paginated reports i will talk about that later and you have many more so then under the modeling so you can see new table your new parameters and you have your language and um, linguistic schemas and under the view um you can you can the way you want your 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 the dashboard to look you can do some kind of manipulations here and anyways, so let's just, so these are the things. And here you have your filter, you have your bookmark, you have your selection, performance analyzers, and um, I, you want to also synchronize your slices. Okay, so um, we, we, we will talk about that in our subsequent videos, but um, this one is to give you a kind of overall view of Pavi, what you're going to expect. And we're going to do some kind of, we're going to get some kind of interactive dashboard and how to go about it. All right, now, if you're ready to go, now just give yourself, you know, just tap your chest and say, you know what, I can do this thing, I can do it. You know, I was watching the football match and I saw something, you know, on the field and it says, um, um, nothing uh, is impossible, you know, I think that's, that's the way it was written, yeah. Okay, so that means you can do it. If others can do it, you can do it, you know. It's just, you just have to think about that and just tell yourself, I can, I can handle this myself. So under the head button, so you can see some guided learning. If you want to learn something, you can see training videos. You can see some documentations and support also. And Power BI Father support. And you can also see community and Power BI blogs. And, and you have external tools and you have different things here. Okay. So now that we have, I've taken you through just the, the menu and also just the simple environment. Now we are going to start getting our data. So in this course, I'm going to use the sample data that Power BI has offered us to use, okay? Then in the next one, I'm going to teach you 
how to import data from SQL Server and then work with those data and then build some astonishing visuals. All right, now let's continue. So in this case now, we're gonna import. Now, if you look at this place, add data to your report. Once loaded, your data will appear in the feed pane. So, you know, this is the feed pane. Now we said it before. So you see that there are many ways that you are just pointed to get data here, get data here, you can get data and you know, and on the home, you can also get data, but now let's just use the simple one. Try a sample data set. Now click on this. All right. So now when you try the sample data set, it's a two ways to use sample data set. Take it through your mind. Well, okay, that's fine. And experiment it on your own. So, and that is what we are doing now. We are almost doing both because I'm, 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 I'm teaching you on how to do it. And then you can also experiment it yourself. So then load simple, load sample data. So if you click on the load sample data, now it's gonna keep loading. All right. So, um, okay. It might, it might take a while in yours, you know? And um, so once you start loading, so you're gonna see this and you're gonna see this sample data set been loaded okay so and um if you have seen this sample data set please um uh, and definitely it's going to come up in yours so the next thing that you're going to do is that um you're going to see that a screen is being displayed okay and it's called the navigator all right so in this case now you're going to see two um you, you're going to have like a folder all right and in this folder, you have the financials and the sheet one. So what I do first is this. And what I would just tell you to do as a person is this. Um, look into it carefully. And you can see that first, I always tell students, you know, anything that you see here, try to exploit. So display option. I would just like, okay, I would like to see display option. So you see that only selected items enable data preview. All right. So that's what is there. Okay, so that means, okay, only selected items and enable data preview. So that means I can preview my data. Okay, so now let me preview the financials and see. So when I preview the financials, so it gives me an insight. Now, before the preview, I want you to understand something. Now, let me click it again, unclick it. Now you'll see that you have only cancel here and you don't have below. Now, let me, let me show you properly. Um, all right, so you'll see that you have just fully cancel and you have transform data and load, but the transform data and load is not being, um, um, you, you cannot really, you cannot use it now. So you just only see the cancel. That means you can cancel and go back. All right. So, but now if I click on the financial, um, on the financials, so I see what I want to preview. So. So it gives me an insight, okay? I'm trying to preview this now. And so I have the segment, you see the different columns that I have. I have the country, I have the product, I have the discount band, I have the, um, what's it called, units sold, I have the manufacturing price, I have the, um, what do you call the sales price, I have the gross sales, I have the discount, I have the sales and um, I have the cost of goods sold. Um, the COGS means cost of goods sold. I have the profits and I have dates. Okay, fine. So everything looks fine for me. And I want to say this, that in this case, um, I, I think I would say this data is actually a clean data. Okay. That means I don't really need to do a lot of cleaning um, because, you know, as a data analyst, I uh, will say that some of the time we spend more of your time trying to, you know, uh, clean your data, you know, so that uh, before you can start doing data exploration, data manipulations and doing visualization, because if your data is not clean enough and you might, you might, you're going to make definitely some errors in your, your analysis. So always make sure that you clean your data, but nevertheless, I'm going to take you through the journey on what to do. Now, if you look at it, you have now the load, you have the transform data and you have the cancel. So I, I don't want to click on the load, you know, on a normal base now, when my, because the data is already clean, okay? 
you can just click on load and that's okay. But I, I still prefer to, for me to go through the transform data. The reason is that I just want to see something. I want to see if I can still manipulate something. You understand? It's not just only about the cleaning process, but I just want to see maybe what about if I want to add a new column, all right, to if I want to add a new column to what I'm doing. So how do I go about, go about it? So it's just like this. Just think about it. You go to you go to a grocery sh shop and uh, and you bought something and you took it home and it's like okay before you use it you just want to wash it because um you don't know who must have touched it you know what you bought and you just want to be careful you understand or maybe you also bought a clothes or you bought uh, some jeans and uh, you just you just want to ensure that before you wear it you just want to wash it first okay so the process of transforming data is to make sure that you clean your data properly and and then before you can actually use it so in this case now i'm taking the financials but if you look at the sheet let's look at what is in the sheet it wasn't the sheet it's almost the same it's the same so it's just like a replication of that okay it's just like a copy of what is in the financials okay so you can see that they are the same so i don't need to click both of them i just need to click on the financials and then i click on the transform data so now you go to your transform data. I hope you're with me. At least you have this data set. You don't have any issues. Like maybe, oh, you didn't, you are not using the same data set I'm using. So we are using the same data set now. But please take note again, use the data set, um, the sample data set, okay? And then you come to the same point. So you transform, you click on the transform data. So if you click on transform data, um, you'll see that, the Power Query Editor is going, to, is going to appear. And this is very, very important. Now, this is where you're going to do a bulk work of your cleaning, you know? This is where you're going to do so much cleaning and then at the end, you're going to be sure that, yes, what you have done is really, really good. Before you now, you, before you now close and apply and take it to the next stage, all right, for visualization. So, without much ado, if you look at the Power Query Editor, if you are used to Excel, you see that Excel also has this editor, all right? The Power Query editor. So if you if you work um, a lot with Excel, you you find this also. So it's just it's just the same. So in the Power Query editor now, you see that you have what you call the close and apply. You have the new source. For example, you want to get a new data in. You know you can also come here and get a new source. Okay, and you have your um, enter data. I believe you have seen this before data setting manage parameters refresh and and you have choose um what you call columns and remove columns and keep rows and remove rows and you can also split your columns you can group by then you can use um first um, row as header and you can also use um replace values in case you want to replace some values and most of the time you know if you have also worked with csv file you'll see that you you sometimes you just need to use this first rule as header. All right, so so um, the other thing you have to understand is this, please, I want to always say this, anytime you see a drop down menu in any of this, all right, always try to look at what are the possible options that you have there. For example, look at this, for example, you can remove columns, all right? But now it's a remove columns and remove other columns. So there are possibility that you can choose a column and then remove the other columns. Yeah, for some possibility that you can just choose a column and remove that column. So you should understand. Then if you talk about rows also, you see that keep rows, you see you can keep the top rows, you can keep the bottom rows, you can keep range of rows, then you can keep also duplicates and you can keep errors. So it is always important or imperative for you to just take a look into any of the drop down button that you see. And that's a very good way to learn Power BI and be a master of it as soon as fast as possible. Okay. So, and you can also say remove rows. You see, remove top rows, remove bottom rows, remove alternate rows, and uh, remove duplicates and uh, remove blank rows. Then you can also split column. You can see that you can split column by delimiter. You can split column by characters, by position, by lowercase, by uppercase, by digits to not digits, and by not digits to digits. So, you see, and if you have not done that, you wouldn't have known that you have those options that you're going to choose from. So that is why I always say it is necessary that you look at those drop-down um, uh, buttons carefully, observe what you have. 
So in this Power Query Editor, it's very powerful. Okay, then if you look at use first role as headers. So in this case now, you see that you can use first role as headers and you can use headers as first role. So uh, these are the th some of the things that you see in, uh, uh, in this um, Query Editor that are very useful. And when we bring in um, multiple tables and when we bring in, especially we're gonna import tables from SQL server, you're gonna understand some of this concept, like, you know, you want to merge queries, all right? And you want to merge uh, new queries or append, all right? You want to append and, and also it offers us what you call the IAI insight, you know, the Azure machine learning. And um, that is also very interesting, especially if you also want to be a data scientist and you can also, you have to understand uh, predictive analysis, okay? Or predictive statistics, so to say. And in this case, um, it has to do with more of machine learning. So you're going to make some predictions. You're going to, you're going to build some, something like a recommendation engine. You're going to do a lot of machine learning um, exercises. Okay, so that is that. So um, for the transform data, um, in the transform data, you see we have the group by, you have the use first role as header. We've seen that before. You can also transpose, you can reverse column, you can count rows, and you can delete data type, you can rename, all right? You can also replace values. We've seen that you can pivot columns, you can unpivot columns, and you can move and you can convert to list. You can also split column, we've seen that before, and you can also see your format. You can have the lower case, the, you, you can convert your data to lower to upper. And uh, so, but we, we're gonna also take a note into that. Okay, so it's not a problem. So under the statistics, we're gonna see the count volume, the count these things, and you have all of this. And under the date, um, you see, you will not see these now showing that much, you know, they look, um, um, they seem not to show because um, where we are now, we are not on a date column. But now, if, for example, we have a date column, you'll see what is going to happen there. Let's see. Um, let's look for any date column. Okay, now you can see that this is a date column. So if I click on this now, so you'll see that you have all the options will now appear. That means you can get the age, you can get the year, you know, year of the, and you can get the month, you can get the quarter, you can extract the quarter, the date, the month from all this, okay? So, because I'm in the date column. So now, then you can also see the earliest date and the latest date, you know? You know, when, you, when you're writing, if, you, if you're coding, you can just say the minimum or the maximum, it gets you the earliest and uh, the, the, the um, the latest should be then the maximum. Okay, so so that is that. So um, you can also run your Python script here. You can also run your Python script and you can also run your R script. So uh, it depends on the one you, you're working with. I, I work more with um, Python and, you know, so, and that's what I use a lot. So then you also have the issue of adding columns. So you see that you have what you call the column from examples, the column, um, um, custom column, you have the invoke columns and you can duplicate index column, conditional columns. And like I told you already, always please try to check what you have there. You see the index column, you have zero one and you can also customize your columns. So um, your index, sorry. So you also have the format, okay? The same thing we've seen before. You can also extract, you know, first letter, the length and you know, so you've got a lot of things to do, but like I said, I'm going to take you through all these and it is very, very important that you understand everything, you know, so at the, at the end, you can become a pro in it. So now when you come to the view, um, this part is also very important. Now, if, for example, I just, I click on the segment. Now I look at the view. Now, um, this says show white case, you know, there are, there are some things here that are very important and especially those of you who may also want to write certification exam. I, this question is most of the time you find it that, you know, it talks about column quality, column profile, column distributions, okay? So if you look at the column quality, let's start with column quality now. And you see, I just click on the segment. So I'll see what you call the valid, the error and the empty. So it's telling me about, okay, valid is 100% valid. There is no error. 
and there is no empty empty rows in this column. All right, so you see it's the same thing. So our data is actually clean, you understand? So that is why we're not seeing any of those errors now. When there's no error, there's no empty. So that means this column and all the records there, they're okay. So um, that is that. So what you see here, when you're dealing with column quality is actually the valid, the error and the empty, okay? So I hope that one is understood so far. Then the next thing you have to understand is, or you know, just to look into is what you call the column distribution. So um, anyway, before then, if you also check the other ones, now um, for me to remove it, I just have to click it again. So I can also like, I can look at the, I can look at this column and see also, and you see actually it's for all the columns actually, whether you click the first, you know, it shows you the percentage valid errors and um, empty. So now, now that I'm through with column quality, I can look into the column distribution. So if you like, look at the column distribution, I click on it. Now it's going to show me something like a, um, a bar chart. Okay. So, and you see what it shows me is you have the distinct and the unique. All right. Um, um, in, in further lessons, I will tell you the difference between this distinct and the unique, you know, and so you see that you have, it shows just the distance and the unique. So it shows that here you have, on this one, you have five distance and zero unique. Here, five distance and zero unique. And here you have six distance and zero unique. And here you have four distance and zero unique. And this one you have um, 510 distance and zero unique. Okay, so that's that. Then the next one is that you're gonna look into your column profile. So if you look at the column profile, you see that it has more, you know, um, sometimes I always like to say, um, it is more of the column quality, you know, you know, the column quality, we have the valid, the empty and the error. But in this case now, you see that you have more than that. You have, see, you have the empty, you have the error, but you have the count, you have the distinct, you have the unique, and you have the empty string and you have the minimum and maximum. But remember that when we are talking about the column distribution, it was always talking about the distinct and the unique. But in this case, um, column co uh, profile has more to offer. Okay, so you can really see the the count, the error, the empty, the distinct, the unique, and the empty string, the minimum and the the maximum. So that is that for the now. So let me click it again and go back. So I'll just leave all of these no the the show whiteboard. Okay, that's what is click. I, I'm not touching anything for the now. So and so if you also look at the other side, the tools. Let me see if I'm true with this. Okay, fine. So you can go to columns and yeah. So if you look at the tools here, um, you see that you have the um, diagnose steps and steps yeah, start diagnosing and um, so you can just start and then you can stop. Okay, then here, the help, you can go for your documentation, the training and all. So all these are very important that you take a look into them, but um, at intervals, we're gonna be building on each of them one after the other so that you can grab the concept, concept very, very strong uh, because understanding this basic and building on it will make you to become really an expert in it. And also knowing some of the things that are very useful for you to take note of. So now, um, let's go back to home now. So in the home, you know, that's always the first place that you're going to start to work with and you're going to start something from. And, and so on the left-hand side, you're going to see the table that you imported. You know, you remember when we, the table that we loaded, you remember when we said that we should load, uh, we click on load at load and transform. So when we loaded and transform and loaded and transform the table, so we came to this power query editor. So now this is where we want to do all our transformation. But now the first thing I want you to understand is that um, I want you to look at this table carefully. Now you have many options. If you right click on the table, look at it, just right click on your button. If you right click on the table, um, you can rename it. For example, I, I don't like the name. You know, I just want to call it sales, for example. I want to just call it sales. I want something very simple, okay? Or I want to give it the name that suits what I'm doing, okay? So I can rename it, I have the possibility to rename it, I have the possibility to delete it, I have the possibility to also make a copy, and I can enable load, 
what it means um, enable law these days that um, if I now want to close and apply, um, I'll be able to load it to the next phase, okay, where I can do my analysis, okay. So I can include in report refresh, I can duplicate, I can reference, move to group, advanced editors and properties, okay. So, um, so this is just all what you can do here. So now let me just do one thing here. Let me say I want to rename it. So there are two ways I can rename this, just watch. I can click on the rename here. Alternatively, just take your eyes to the right, to the right, and you can see under the property, you can see the name finances also. So let me say I want to rename it to sales report. I just want to call it sales report. Now, I'm not doing the renaming from this now by right clicking and then rename, all right? I can do it from here. It's quite easy. It depends on your, it depends on what you want. You know, there are many ways to, to, to do it, but I can also do it here. I can just call it my sales report. Sales. Um, I can call it sales table. It's okay. All right. So once I do that and I click somewhere different, so you see that it changes immediately. So you can see that here. So now it is no longer the finances. It's not my sales table. All right. I, uh, but when, I also know that it's a table. So uh, let me just put it as sales uh, report. It's, it's, it's fine because I already know it's a table. I like to, you know, sales report. Okay. All sales. Okay. Sales report is fine. So now after doing that, let's look at um, something else that is very important for you to understand. So you see that when I did this, all right, um, when I changed the name, it changed, it changed here. Okay. But now the next thing I want you to understand here is this: before you move into the next stage, I, it is always, I, I tell my students or my clients, I say, look, take a look into this table properly, understand this table, what you're going to work on. Because once you understand it, you are going to have a good concept of what you're going to do. So you know how to manipulate your way out and it becomes easier for you. Now, if you look at this place here, now look at this very button here. All right. It's the button of a table. Now, if you click on it, now you see, you're going to see a lot of options there. Sometimes I like to use this instead of me to go on the top and start looking for, it depends on what you want to do. You can see that you can also find use first role as header. You can see copy entire table, use custom, invoke, keep top rows. You see everything, most of those things that we saw here at the top, they are also here. All right. So, and again, once you are, once you click on this, don't forget, I always said it. Anytime you have this kind of, you can also look, the, um, it's like a span button, you know, just like see more. You can see that, aha, okay, there are things here that I can still work with. Please always take note of that. It's very, very important. So then the next thing you're going to see is that you see the ABC. You were like wondering why ABC by the side of segment. Okay. Um, let me just drink a cup of tea again. All right. So um, if you look at the ABC, so the ABC here, um, it's just, it's just your text. That means it's trying to tell you that, hey, you know what? This column here is a text. It's a text column. You know, you're dealing with text. So you're not dealing with um, numbers. You're not dealing with something numeric. You're not dealing with dates. You're dealing with um, text, okay? And and this will give us to, this will now um, push us to something we call the data types, okay? Now, if you click on the ABC, just click on it, you will see that you have what you call the decimal numbers. You have the fixed decimal numbers, you have the whole numbers, you have the percentage, you have the date time, you have the date, and you have the duration. You see, there's a text. It's trying to tell you, hey, you are dealing with this column, and this column is a text column. All right. So, and you have the binary, and you have the true text. So sometimes um, you can use what you call, if you want to look at this using um, locale, so you can click on that and see what you have there. Always ensure that you always click on something to know what is going on. Don't just ignore and say, you know what? This is not useful to me. Everything here is useful. If it's not useful, they won't have placed it here for you to use. All right. So now you can see, um, um, it said the data type and my locale is Germany. So it depends on where your 
you will see from then you can put it okay so i just like i i cancel it i don't need it i've just i just you know i just since it is already specifying where i'm um you know where i am so so now um if it were to be a not text um um column you'll see that different different ones will be selected here so like this one is also a text and abc that's why you have that so if you look at it and this is also a text then that's why you have that so and but when you come to um the discount bound is also a text that's why you have that and your unit sold but now it is 1.2 okay so you see that it is in decimal it's a decimal number it is not even a whole number that is being selected it is the decimal number that is selected okay so you have that so you see that okay it works fine because you know you can see some decimals there and, and um your unit price is also um this one is whole number you see one two whole number the one two three is whole number and the the gross says is whole number and the other one is um yeah the gross says is i'm um, sorry it is a decimal number and discounting so you have all of them so you just take a look into that and for the date you can see that the date this is for the date and this is just the date okay and that is that so and for the months um here is just whole number uh, month name is whole number the year is whole number it's not date in this case you know it's just um um it's just a whole number okay all right fine so and then if you have done that the next thing you have to do is this um always be very careful don't be too much in haste so what is the next thing you have to do i have to now i've checked this place and i've looked at this okay everything is fine i want to look at this this drop down button here that means like a filter button i can i can see more you know it seems that to me that there's something more there i can i can check so if i click on it you see that it gives me the ability to sort in ascending or descending order. So if you if you if you hadn't clicked on this now, you wouldn't have known that you have the opportunity to sort in ascending or descending order. And you can also remove empty. If for example there are empty and um, text feature, you can also filter by text. And in on the text feature, you can also see that you have the equal does not and and ends with and and here too. You see, if for example I want to just see just um i want to feature and just see the segment that is just government alone or government and enterprise so i can just come here now i can feature i can first of all either i unselect all of them and i just choose my government and my enterprise okay now for you to see it carefully let me choose my government first and i click on okay so if i click on government you'll see that everything here is just government so what you're seeing now on this table um it's reflecting the government sorry the the segment by government mm -hmm. all right and and it shows the country the the products and the discount bank but now it is being filtered the segment is being filtered to reflect just government alone all right so you can also do some manipulations here you can say okay you know what I don't want, it depends on the first specification or the use case that your company is in need of or what you want to achieve in this, in your analysis. So maybe you say, okay, you know what? I, I don't really want, I just want um, enterprise and the mid market and government. So I can just take three of them. I can say, I need the enterprise. I need the mid market and um, the government. So once I take that, you see that I will have the government, I'll have the mid market and I also have the enterprise. So once that is done, you see, it gives me the opportunity to filter what I want to do. But if you want to sort in ascending or descending order, that's not also a problem. But I may not need that now here. You can sort in descending or ascending order. It's fine, you know. And now that you have done that, you've tried to filter, you can also say, okay, I want to clear my filter or I want to bring it back to the defaults, you know, to, to what I have at the initial stage. So either you just select all of them or you can just say, I clear my filter. So if you clear your filter, everything is back. So you see that that filter sign is not there anymore. All right. What I mean is this, when I, when I was selected and I clicked only on government, just check again, I clicked only on government and I click on okay, you see that um, there's this feature sign here. All right. So, but once I clear my feature now, 
uh, is not there anymore. It's, it's, it's out. So that gives you a better way to understand your, your data properly. So you can just take a look also, take a look through all of them. And for example, like here now, I want to extract the dates and I can say, okay, date feature. Maybe I don't want to, I don't want all the dates now. I can choose some of the dates and I'll call console filter based on the date range. Maybe I want to take between a certain date or after a certain date, or I want to get, you know, I, I can just do that. It's not a problem. Okay, but in this case, we are not doing because we are assuming or we know that this data is just fine for us to use. And so we are not doing so much manipulations on the data now, all right? And so we just want to, I'm showing you what are the possible things you can find in Power BI and how to navigate your way through Power BI, all right? But um, I, I don't want to forget to tell you this, that if you are enjoying our lectures, just click on the like button and subscribe to our channel because um, there are a lot of things I, I want to share with you. There are a lot of things I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to pass across to you in this whole um, tutorials and this whole lectures in this whole section so that you become a master of Pavia in no distant time. So, but however, I, 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 like I said, I want you to always follow up with our new videos and uh, you understand more. So now in this case, I'm going to cancel that. So, and that is for that. So now that I've done that, so the next thing I want you to look at here is this. Um, if you look at this whole um, part of it now, let's come to the right-hand side. You see what you call the apply steps. Now, you see, when we came into the Power Query Editor, we saw those things. We didn't even do anything, and it gave all the apply steps. I, I guess you can still remember, don't forget, the step that we have taken so far is that we, we, we had to look for the source of the data, and we were using the sample source. And we saw the navigation navigator, remember, where we previewed our data at first to check, okay, this is the data that we want to use. And we said, okay, that's fine. Then we now click on load and apply. So Power BI was able to det detect the kind of data type. You understand? That means the kind of type that each column has. If it is a text or if it is a um, decimal number, or if it is a whole number. So Power BI was able to do that for us, these applied steps. And if you look at the Power Query Editor, there is no place you actually you can see the return button, the undo. You know, you don't really see it here. So now, for example, let's just let's just do something now, and you will understand what I'm talking about. So let's remove the discount column. Let's just take the discount column out. Now this is the discount column. Okay. So we want to remove this column. Now, if you come here, you see that remove columns. You can remove the column. And you can see the option, if I want to remove other columns, that means I want to keep this, that's what it means. But if I want to remove just this column, I can remove it. So if I remove column, now you see that the discount, the discount column has been removed. Now, under the apply steps, you can see that here, that you have the remove columns. That means um, we have removed a column. So for any step, anything that you do, any change that you make, anything that you try to implement, you know, that has to do with changes, okay? You see that um, it will be under the apply steps. So at the end, um, it, it helps you to know, oh, this is what I've done. And in case you want to go back to the previous state you were. So what you just have to do, because there is no undo button here, you just for you to click this and then um, you come back to again to your previous state. But please be very careful. I'm not, I'm just clicking the, what I just did now. If you are not mastery of it yet, don't click more than that, okay? Just click on the thing that you have changed, you know, of recent. So, so you see that my discount is back there again, but I just still want to remove the discount. I, I, let me assume I don't need it for my, for my analysis. So I remove it, remove column. So the discount is gone. So that is that so far. And then the next phase is this. Once you know that your data is properly okay, you know that your data is properly okay, so um, I don't want you to be confused about what you see here, the function table and that. Now, just leave that for the now, okay? And But once your data is, you know that you are sure of the data, that this data is okay and is good for analysis. And, and let me also remove the discount bound. Let me just remove this also. I don't need it. I just, I'm just saying for this analysis, I don't need it. I'll say remove columns. I'm going to remove it. So I remove that. Okay. 
So in that case, there are also different ways to do that. You can also like right click and you will see remove. You see, you can remove. It depends on the one that is faster for you. You know, I, I sometimes, like I said, most time I try to just right click and then I see those things at the at the glance and then I just keep working. Okay, so now that you are done with that, we um we are going to come here to the close and apply button. So you can see the close and apply. So here you will see that you have close and apply. You have the apply and you have the close. And sometimes somebody will be asking what's the difference between close, apply, apply button and close. So you're going to see that also in some of my videos. Okay. So I'll take a look into that on the differences. Okay. But in this case now, we're going to close and apply. You know, we made some changes. So once also make sure that those changes are applied. Okay. And you can see that in apply, you, you want to apply the change and the close. Actually, actually, there's not much to do. There's no change that has been made. You just want to continue with your analysis. Okay. But um, I would say the traditional way, I will say just click on close and apply. So when you click on close and apply, now it's coming, it's going to take you now back again to our report page. All right, it's going to take you back to get to our approach page. Now let's just hold on a bit and let's see what's going to happen. Okay. So you see that it is loading. So we are just waiting. So while we're waiting, um, you can take a cup of tea and uh, you can drink something while we're waiting. All right, so it's trying to load. Okay, that's fine. Now it has loaded. And from what we can see, everything, look, everything looks fine. So um, in this case now, um, we are gonna see, you see that the, the sales report table has been loaded here. So now what is the next thing that we have to do? So now we are now on our report page. You know, before you see that on the field, there was nothing there. It will tell you that no data has been loaded. So you should have to go and get there. So now we have our sales report page now. Now look at it. And under the sales report page, you have, um, you have your different columns. But you see that some of these columns that you have here, you have the sigma or the summation functions there, uh, signed there. And if you look at it, those ones that you have the summation signs, actually, they, these are the columns that are either numeric or what you call the decimal. So it, it's just like, you know, they, 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 Power BI is trying to do something there. You know, it's trying to sum something there. You know, it just, and and um, I will talk about, especially when we start using the DAX formula, we will talk about, um, like this is, um, um, you talk about the explicit and then the implicit, you know, so, um, in this case now, we're just seeing a kind of summation, all right? So, and I will tell you later on the difference between the explicit and the implicit, okay? So, so, um, so now, now that we have this, so we, we have the fields, okay, that are in our tables. They are already there for us to use. And so how do we begin? Now, this is the visual part of it. And you want to present something to your stakeholders, you know? Because sometimes people like to work with visuals than just with numbers because some people cannot comprehend numbers. They want to comprehend visuals. Okay. So what you do is that, um, let's look at the sales by, by segment. So we're going to look at the sales. You can click first. Some, some people would do it like this. Some people will say, okay, you know what? I know the, the visuals that I'm going to use. I'm going to first of all drag, click on the visuals, but I just take a very simple way. I know what I want. So I click on my sales. All right. I want to know first the sales. Let's say the total sales now. Okay, let me get my total sales. So now, um, what you have here is what you call your ties. All right. So this is your ties. Okay. But now I just click on the total sales and it's showing me like a bar chart. But I just want my sales to just be, um, you know, like five thousand four hundred and something dollars or or euros. Okay. I I can do that. 
So, but I, I want you to understand something. Um, when I clicked on that, um, you'll see that I just have this um, bad church. But I, I can say, no, what? I want it to be uh, just a single, just um, just something numeric. So I click on, look at it. You can come to the, your card. But make sure that here is still clicked, is still highlighted. And then you click on your, make sure this, this tile is still highlighted. And then you click on your card. And if you click on your card, you see that it gives you the says a million. All right. It gives you the says, okay? So it is 118 million. 118, yeah, common 72 uh, million. Okay, so that's it. Um, that's that so far. But um, the first thing that you also have to understand here could be that yours is just working. You're saying dollars or you're saying the currency that you, you want because I just say 118, okay? But I don't know if it's actually dollars. I don't know if it's um, euros. I don't know if it's pounds. I don't know if it's yen. And I don't know. Depends on the currency that you're using. It's not, it's not really stipulated there. But I'll come to that, okay, very soon. But I just want you to see what we are doing now. All right. So so this is your sales, okay? But now I, I want to see my profits. I think um, we have also um, profit. So what I do most of the time is this, if I want my, my, if I want everything to be on the same size, for example, if I want everything to be on the same size, or I want to do some, something on it, I'll tell you how to do that in the next one. Okay. So, but just take this now for this. Okay. Then look at the profits. So, but ensure that you remove your cursor from here and then click on the profit now. Sorry. This one just popped up. That's one thing about Power BI and I can just remove it. I don't want it. I click on my profit. So my profit is also gonna show like this. By default, it's gonna show me something like that. So, but what I want is that I want it to be just like, you know, like what I have here. So I'm coming back again to my car. So I'm gonna put it there. So my profit is 16,89 million. Okay, that's good. All right. And let me look at the unit sold. The unit sold, I'm going to click on this. And you see that I'll see the unit sold. The unit sold is going to be, uh, I can put it back to my car. You see one, one, um, comma, one, three million sold. Okay. That's much. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Now, um, I have that already. So I just, these are some of my, you know, um, yeah, KPIs, you know, um, key performance indicators, and it depends on what your company wants to see, all right, on your on your visuals. So the next thing I want to do is that I already have seen my sales, my profits, and my unit price. So please, the orientation and how you design your dashboard, it has to also have to do with your feelings, you know, your creativity. Uh, sometimes I may not just put all those things at the top. I can put it by the side here. It just depends. But I want to say this too. When you are building your dashboard, please, ensure that you don't have so many things on one page, you know. Sometimes it can be very misleading. And sometimes, you know, somebody may not be able to really capture everything. And it can also strain the eye. But, you know, it's okay. But somebody will ask, how many visuals are you supposed to put in a, in a, in a page, you know? Yeah, I think I would say it depends on what you're trying to achieve and what you're trying to do. And But make sure that for the stakeholders, for the people that you are presenting your work to, that it is clear enough for you to understand it's better for you to navigate from one visual to another but make sure um, um you try to put things that have similar magnitude similar um things that are they have similar specifications you know in the same visuals i think so that you can easily explain that okay so now let's look at our sales and and our segment so now i want to bring in a bar chart for example so i'll click on my sales now all right. All right. Says it's been clicked already. And then I want to click on my segment. Okay. So if I click on says and segment, you see that I have my says and my segment. Okay. So this is my says and my segment. And you can see that, but now you see that it's a bit too small for me to see. And I will talk about that in, in the nearest next class. But the first thing is that I want to put it so that for you to see first, okay? 
out there's what you call if you look at this part of it of this tide at the top you see what you call the filter here you have the focus mode and if you have this if you look at these three buttons here you can see you can remove and you can show us a table and you can export your data but what i want to do here is that i just want to put it on a focus mode so that you can see properly so if i put it on a focus mode you see that aha uh -huh, this is what i actually want to see so you see that my sales by segment and you see that the government the most sales is coming from the government and uh, and you can see the different segment okay so if that is done we can go back back to the report you click on back to report here it takes you back to the report okay so we've been able to do sales by segment all right so this is we have we have chosen bar chart here we can choose any anything that that you want to use and it just depends on you but now we're going to look at um units sold by segment okay so we're going to look at the units sold by segment and i'll click on the unit sold and i'll click on the segment where's the segment the unit sold and segment okay fine so now if I click unit sold and segment, I still get the same thing. All right. This is what Power BI is just trying to um, suggest for me, you know, like what you call recommendation, recommend. Okay. So, but I don't want it in this way. I actually want it to be in form of a donor chart or a pie chart. So I can come here, but I make sure that this is selected and then click on my donor chart. If I click on my donor chart, then you see that I have this. All right. I have this now displayed. So now what I've done here is this. I'm just looking at um, two things. Now I'm looking at, I'm, I'm having um, two, two charts already. Now one is showing me the unit sold by segment, okay? Uh, the other one is showing me the sales by segment. And let me just add one additional one to it so that I just want to make sure that it suits what I'm doing here. So I'm going to give, I'm going to get uh, what you call the sales now by profit. So I'll come to sales again, then I'll come to profit. All right. So in, in this case, you can see, sorry, the sales, I'm not sorry. I'm saying the sales by, um, sorry, profit by my segment. So I'm going to choose my profit. And I'm going to choose my segment. So in this case, I don't want to use um, a donut chart. I don't want to use a bar chart. I want to use something different. I can use a table. It's fine. I can use what you call a pie chart. I want to use a pie chart in this. So I use a pie chart. So when I use it, when I have a pie chart like this, okay. So um, in this case, you'll see that this is a pie chart. And looking at it carefully, um, you see that it, it looks it looks really, really, you now have three of your stuff here. So it, it depends on what you want to do. So you can set them on the same, um, what's it called, um, similar size or... So for me to let me make this um, canvas a bit bigger. So let me collapse all this. All right, you can collapse that. So now you see what we have here. Okay, so um, there are other things you can you can do with this now. Now that you have all this, you already have your sales, your your profit. You have unit sold. You have segment, and you have profit by segment. You have unit sold by segment. So the next thing I always tell my clients to do is this. I I want to show you something here. Very very important. Now, under the visualization, you see, we've only placed the visuals here, but there are a lot of things we can do in those visuals. For example, you can come to the, the next thing is you can see the format. All right, you can format all this, all those visuals. Now, now this donut chart is being selected. So you want to format it. You want to just see, hey, come on. I want to just, I, I don't like the position of my legend, okay? 
uh, there are things I don't like, you know. I, I want to also increase the size. I want to do something about it. I, I don't want to see, okay, now let, let's see what, let's just look at one of one aspect of formatting on this, okay? So that you understand what I'm talking about. Now, we're looking at the unit sold by segment, right? Now, when I clicked on these tiles or on these visuals, you see, when I came to format, I saw the visuals and you'll see the genera and you see also, you know, you can expand. That means you can reset all settings to default and that and that. So, but what we want to do is this. Um, under this, I will just use this as an example of format, okay? You come to your visuals. All right. You see that the legend is on. So that's why you can see the legend here. Okay. Um, I will make it bigger. Just with time. Don't worry. Okay. The legend is on. Um, or what I would do is this for you to understand it properly on one case. All right. So let me assume, let me create a new page just for this purpose. All right. So, and in the new page now, I'm doing, look at it. I'm doing profit. Sorry, it was unit sold. Unit sold by segment. Okay. And it was a donut charge. Okay. Now. Let me make it bigger so that you see what I'm going to do. That's why I'm bringing it just all into one page. So if I come to my format, so you see that in this donut chart, you have the legend. So you can change the position. If you look at the legend, you see that it is on the central right. You can change the location. You can change the position. It is up to you. Um, it is up to you to change the position if you want to change the position. So you can put it on the top right, top left, you know, I can put it on top left, you see? The legend will change, the position will change, top left. I can put it at um, top sender, all right, to change. So um, it seems that you're not saying that now. So let me cover this place. So it is there, you see, it is there. So you see, it is, no, um, yes, I want to review this later. I don't need, uh, I mean, okay. Okay, then, um, let me say yes. Let me just put it here, it's okay. All right, so, so in this case now, you can see that I've placed it on the top center. So it depends on you, you can place it on the center left and you can do that. So you can do a lot of uh, formatting here. So I, I, I believe you, if you've worked with Excel before, and you know how to just grab out even the text. Okay. You can, you see that the text is really small. You can also increase the text size, maybe to, you know, you can increase the text size. Now we're increasing the text size of the legend because we are still working on that legend because under the options for legend. So you can increase the text size. You can increase, um, reduce it, or you can increase it. It doesn't, uh, it depends on you. So I'm, I'm reducing it again. Let me say to 18. So it, it depends on what you want to do. So, and also the color is it, your choice to choose any color that you want. So this will help you. And um, then for the, for the donut chart itself, you will see that uh, you have also different options. So now we're just looking at the legend. If you come to the data, detail labels, all right. And you will see that your your detail uh, your labels are there outside. So it depends if you want to put inside or anywhere. So, but now you can also see that the detail label is showing the data value and the percentage. So if you just only want to show the percentage of total, you can just only click on percentage of total. Then it will only give you the percentage of total. So let me put it on the focus mode so that you can see what I'm talking about. So you see that it gives us the percentage of the total. So it's not giving us the detail value anymore. Because here we have label content, it was, uh, you had more, but now you see, we have the option to choose um, data value, data value percentage of total, but now we're just getting only the percentage total. So that is very, very good. So you can manipulate your work. You can, you know, look into your work properly and see what you're doing. Uh, if you are, if you are really meeting to the specifications of what you want. Okay. So um, it is very, very important that you you understand how to work with Power BI. Like I said, this is just a first introduction into you to feel comfortable 
about the power of Power BI, what you can do with Power BI, and the many things you can do with Power BI. You know, I, I want to say that if you if you enjoy this section, and please don't forget to click on the like button and also subscribe to this channel because we have a lot of things to show you. And in the next class, we're going to see how we can import Power BI from different sources and then begin to work on it one step after the other so that you have a good understanding of Power BI and become a pro in the shortest time. So finally, what you just have to do now here is that you want to rename this page, okay? So that you get what you want, rename page. So I can just rename my page and call it um, M6. Um, again, okay, the name of the office already says report. I can call it my, I can, okay, I can just say, okay, financial report is fine, you know, financial, financial, N-I-A-N-C-I-A-L, financial report. Don't mind my spelling sometimes, okay? Finance, F-I-N-A, F-I-N-A-N, N-A-N, financial report. Okay. Anyway, your spelling is coming correct. Okay. Okay. So, so um, this is fine. This is just a tentative, you know, what you're going to expect. And I will also tell you how you can improve your optics, your design, you know, in the future training. So I wish you the best and uh, uh, I wish you a good day. And please don't forget to take your cup of tea or your cup of coffee. Um, a lot to show you in this um, sections. And please don't forget, click on like and write something in the comment to let us know what you are struggling with and how we can help you. All right, thank you very much.